Hi there, welcome to my channel. I am very happy to see you here. My name is Soy and I'm a UX designer at Google. In today's video, I want to talk about how to choose the right projects for a UX portfolio. And then I'm going to do a step-by-step -step walkthrough of creating an online portfolio. I previously made a few videos to answer some common questions about how to create and present UX portfolios. So if you're interested in those videos, make sure you check them out. Your portfolio in many ways is your most important asset as a UX designer. That is because it helps you in three powerful ways. It helps you get an interview for a job. It helps you attract clients for freelance projects. Finally, and perhaps surprisingly, it helps you stay focused on your UX career. So I would like to share some of my experience to help you build a better portfolio. On my channel, I am dedicated to all things about UX job interviews and product design. So if you're interested in this content, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you won't miss my future videos. In one of my videos, I promised to select one subscriber to do an app critique coaching session with me for free. So if you're interested in this free giveaway, please like that video, subscribe to my channel, and comment down below that video to let me know that you're interested in this free giveaway. I'm also offering other types of one-on-one -on -one career coaching to help you nail your next job interview. So if you want to get more interview advice, view a mock interview, or just talk about career development in general, feel free to use the link down below and sign for a session. Okay, let's first talk about how to choose the right projects for a UX portfolio. Step number one figure out your UX professional identity. There are a lot of roles in the UX industry. UX designer, UI designer, visual designer, service designer, UX researcher, UX manager, UX prototyper, information architect, etc. Make sure you are clear on which role you are interested in working as a job. Step number two. Prioritize project for your portfolio that matches with the positions you are applying for. In the past, you might have worked on diverse types of projects related to UX design, UI design, visual design, and user research. When choosing, project, you, when choosing projects, you definitely want to prioritize the project that show the skills required by the jobs you are applying for. For example, let's say you are applying for UX jobs then um, in your portfolio, you would want to prioritize UX projects to prove that you have the UX skills required by the jobs. One thing to avoid is showing too many projects in a UX portfolio. A good amount of projects to show in a UX portfolio is four to seven projects. I understand that sometimes we have the desire to show all of our past work because we put in a lot of time and energy working on every project all of them are our babies. But remember, the goal of creating a portfolio is to help people learn more about your expertise. Showing too many projects is not going to help people focus on what you are good at. You might want to figure out what are your strongest projects and then aim for quality, not quantity. Recruiters and hiring managers would rather see three well thought out projects than 10 projects that skim the surface. Step number three, variety will keep people interested. Try to switch up the industries and process you feature. If you have a few projects and all of them are mobile design, it will feel repetitive. Let's say you have work on enterprise product, consumer products, mobile design, and desktop design. You might want to show a variety of products and design process to prove that you are capable of taking an appropriate design approach to build a successful product regardless of what surface and constraints it might have. Step number four, prioritize real-world projects. 
The risk of featuring projects that you work with a group of designers in college or boot camp is that it is very hard to identify your contribution or prove your capability of successfully working in a real world setting. To highlight your skills, you'd better off showcasing projects from real work experience. They could be a full time project, contractor project, freelance project, and internship project, etc. Step number five, show complementary skills in your projects. These skills are the skills that you should equip with in addition to your core skills. For a UX designer, some of the core skills are prototyping, wireframing, defining user flows, etc. To perform well on UX projects, it is also necessary to build your knowledge of UI design, visual design, UX research, and even front-end coding. So it's recommended to have one to two projects highlighting these design skills closely related to your core UX skills to show that you are a very well-rounded designer who can combine these skills with your core skills to perform well on UX projects. Now that you know how to choose the right projects for a portfolio, let's build a web portfolio together. The first thing is to choose an online website builder. Please don't spend time coding your own portfolio from scratch. If you are not very proficient in programming or looking to showcase your coding skills, I coded my very first portfolio by myself and it always took me a ton of time to code whenever I tried updating my website. So please use a drag and drop online editing tool to save your life. In the past, I have used Adobe Portfolio. Honestly, I don't think they are very easy to use, so I have already paused my subscription and I'm looking for a better online portfolio builder. In the market today, I know there are Wix.com, GoDaddy, and Squarespace. Um, I don't really have any strong preferences of which one to use. Today, I'll just use Squarespace to demonstrate how to build an online portfolio from scratch. One nice thing about using an online portfolio builder is that a lot of them provide well-crafted, customizable templates to help you quickly get started. In your portfolio, you want to show the projects that you are most proud of. You could either show an overview of all your projects by using thumbnails. So a structure like Utica might serve the purpose well, as the multiple column thumbnails help people quickly learn about your best projects in the same view. An alternative structure you could consider is a single column structure like Nola. Single column helps people read through every featured project as they scroll down on the page. Personally, I would prefer to go with a single column structure if you have a very clear ranking of which project you want people to see first. You could show the project you are most proud of as the first project in the structure and consider even stretching every thumbnail to the full width of the screen so that you are creating an immersive browsing experience for people to scroll down on your page and a single column structure is very clean and easy to read. Different from a resume which just lists out your past experiences and your achievement in plain text, in your portfolio you would want to add a short self-intro to tell people who you are instead of just showing your work. While your past work is a critical aspect when someone is thinking about working with you, it's important to remember that that person isn't looking to hire your work, but the person who made it. So I'm going to paste my intro here and then format it using the tools they provide. And I want to use different font sizes to differentiate a headline and body paragraph. It's nice that they have categorized different font sizes for headings and paragraphs. I would prefer to go with the font size they define because first they look nice. And most importantly, I don't want to memorize the font size defined by myself if they are customized. You can also change the color of the text here. I like the default color, so I'm going to keep that. You might realize that our site title just shows placeholder text and the tabs, our work, our services, company, and contact are not exactly what we need in a UX portfolio. Let's customize them. I'm going to name my site as Soys Portfolio. You can even add a little logo to your site if you want. And it's nice that you can change the style of the banner. I like the same style, so I'm not going to change it. If you click on the little desktop icon, you can also change the layout of the header. 
for tabs on the nav, I might just want to have home, about me, and contact to keep the navigation nice and clean. So I'm going to click on done and then click on page to add the tabs there. I wouldn't say it's a very intuitive design to add the tab names on a settings pop-up dialog, but you know, there's no perfect online portfolio builder. I would like to use this left aligned layout for each of the case studies I'm going to add to my website and I'm going to remove the sections and layouts I don't need. For example, I don't need this promotional section, I don't like the center line section, I don't need this testimonial section and this upsell section. And then I'm going to duplicate the layout I like by clicking on this little duplicate icon and then boom, another left aligned section appeared. We can use each section for each project we're going to add to the website and then customize the sections one by one. This is the most exciting part. You might want to prepare the materials for your projects before uploading them to a portfolio builder instead of creating those content in a portfolio builder. I've tried creating content in a portfolio builder and then I realized that most portfolio builders didn't have very good spelling and grammar checkers. So you might want to use Google Doc or Grammarly to check your spellings and uh, grammar instead of writing content in a portfolio builder. Things you need in a project include, but not limited to, thumbnails, visuals like mocks, banners, and visuals, videos, etc., and content. Some people would include links to interactive prototype. Let's start with the section on the homepage. We want to replace the placeholder image with a thumbnail for this project. Please be aware that different templates have different sizing restrictions on thumbnails. So if there's no information around the height and width allowed for a displayed thumbnail, I would recommend to upload a dummy image and test what the height and width should be for your thumbnail. I have some pre-created thumbnails here, so I'm just going to upload it. And for the layout, I don't want the CTA to float below the thumbnail because the thumbnail is already taking a lot of vertical real estate and I don't feel the need to use additional space for the CTA. So I'm going to align the CTA to the right of the thumbnail. For the content, it is necessary to include the name of this project, a short intro, and the type of work. Let's say this is a dashboard design project. I'm going to copy the content I've created and then paste them here. I highly recommend you to include the type of work in the intro to help people find projects they're interested in checking out. You can just keep it short by adding labels of UX project, UI project, or visual design project, etc. To add another project, you basically just follow the same process and, and upload materials for it. So we have covered how to choose the right projects and how to create a homepage for your online portfolio. In my future videos, I'm going to cover how to create a UX case study on your online portfolio. This is everything I wanted to share with you all today. Thank you so much for watching. If you think this is helpful, please give this video a thumbs up. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.